Well, I decided to extend my X-Tool laser and add some extra things on, so stay tuned to see what I did. On That's How We Do It. I have the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt laser and today I'm going to be upgrading a few things and putting on the extension rails. In addition to the rail extensions, I plan on installing a drag chain and a longer air hose within the drag chain. The first thing we need to do is remove them from the box. It comes with two extension rails, new belts, and two new cables, one for the D1 Pro and one for the D1. The next thing we need to do is disassemble our current laser. We are going to loosen the laser and pull it off the gantry mount so we can easily disconnect the wires without harming them. We then gently push down on the white clip and pull the connection out of the laser head. We will set the laser aside and out of the way. I then turn over the frame and cut the cable ties to the cables on the gantry. We continue cutting all the cable ties along the frame so we can remove the X access and limit switch cable. We then cut the cable ties along the rail section of the laser to free up the wires for removal. We then unplug the X-axis stepper motor and the limit switch. I remove all the screws holding the front of the frame together and then I do the same for the back. I also take the time to unplug the wire from the Y stepper motor and the wire going to the motherboard for the Y stepper motor. We remove both the front and the back of the frame and set them aside for now. We will need to remove the stepper motor on the side of the rail so we can install it on the new extended rail. We first remove the rod that was holding the belt onto the stepper motor. We do this by loosening the screws on the collet that is holding the rod to the stepper motor and then pull the rod out. We can then remove the belt tension screws on both sides of the rear of the rails. This allows us to remove one of the sides from the gantry. We can then remove the four screws that hold the stepper motor onto the other side of the rail.
With the motor removed, we can now remove the gantry and the belt. We can now remove the belts from the gantry. They slip right out with little force. I then finished removing the rest of the wires from the motherboard and set everything aside. To start my reassembly, I get both of the rail extensions. I determine the two sides. One will have the cutout for all the cords and switches and the other will have the holes on the side for the stepper motor. We have to start by putting the new belts on the belt tensioners. To put the tensioners on the new belt, they must first be removed from the old belts. To do this, if you loosen the screw at the top of the tensioner, then you can push the pin that holds the wheel out and remove the wheel so that the belt can come free. You then put the new belt back around the wheel and install the pin and tighten the screw. You can now repeat the process of changing out the belt tensioner on the other belt. We will then attach the belts to the gantry. The top of the belt easily slips into the plastic clip that goes between the gantry wheels. I then slide the gantry into the extension rail. We need to make sure when we put the gantry back onto the rail that the belt does not twist it in any way. We can then attach the belt tensioner loosely onto the rail. We will complete the same process on the other side. We take the new belt and put it around the stepper motor gear. We again extend our belt to make sure that it is not twisted in any way. Then secure the motor into place on the rail. We can then assemble the rest of the frame by putting on the front and the back frame pieces. We can now attach the belt at the front of the frame. We use the double screw collet piece that allows us to put one end into the stepper motor and the other end into the belt rod. Again, making sure our belt is not twisted, we put our belt around the gear side of the rod. We then place the gear side of the rod into the provided hole with the belt wrapped around the gear. We can then line up the rod with the stepper motor and move the collet over so one screw is positioned on the stepper motor and one screw is positioned on the rod. 
We can then tighten down the screws, making sure there's enough tension to keep the rod in place against the rail. After the belts are attached, we will tighten the tension screw on the rear of the frame to take the slack out of the belts. Be careful not to over tighten the belts as they just need to have enough tension on them to allow the gantry to move without slipping on the gears. You can check the belt tension by using your finger and strumming it to make sure that it is tight enough to make a sound. We can test the gantry to make sure that it runs smoothly back and forth. We also want to make sure that each belt is tightened to the same amount. If one belt is tighter than the other, it can cause the gantry to run unevenly while in use, causing your projects to be distorted. I check this by the sound of the belts. I strum the belt and listen to make sure the sound of the belts are similar. If one is tighter than the other, there will be a different pitch in the belt. When the belts are tightened properly, we will then tighten the belt screws on the side to hold the belts permanently into place. We then remove the limit switch brackets from the bottom of the old rail. This step, of course, is only for the pro users. These brackets are what allow the limit switches to recognize where to stop on the rails. We will install the brackets on the new rail in the same locations as the old rail. We will next install the wire harness. We have been provided with two harnesses, one for the non-pro, which will have the white and red connections. The second one is for the pro, which will have the white, red, and the yellow connections for the limit switch. We select the cable that we will need for our machine. Mine is the D1 Pro, so I will have a cable that has a white, red, and yellow connection. The other wire provided is for the D1. We can set that aside as we won't be needing it. This is where things may start to differ for you as I am installing a drag chain setup. If you are just installing the wire harness, you should follow along the bottom of the rail and zip tie the harness to the appropriate holes on the extension. You can then install the wires into the motherboard and the laser module just as you did when you built your original setup. You will then need to go into your software, XCS or Lightburn, and adjust the settings to your layout to accommodate your new laser bed size. I will be completing a video on how to adjust the size in these programs, so look for it in the description box. I start by figuring out how long I need to make my drag chain. I loosely fit the two attachment pieces onto the X-Tool frame. One slips onto the front rail and one slips onto the gantry. I lay the drag chain out and see how much more I need to add to make it long enough to fit the extension rails. I then add the necessary pieces to extend the drag chain. I open the drag chain so I can insert my wire harness and air hose. I seal up the wire harness and the air hose in the drag chain. I secure the two attachment pieces onto the X-Tool by the included double-sided sticky tape.
I then attach the end of the drag chain to the attachment pieces. I start at the front of the frame making sure my wire harness points downwards towards the motherboard while the air hose is on top so it can be attached to my air supply. I then secure my drag chain onto the gantry, making sure the wire harness and the air hose come out towards the laser head module. I run the gantry back and forth to make sure the drag chain does not get caught up on anything. I then plug in all my wires, including to the motherboard, the gantry stepper motor, and finally my laser. I finish securing the wire harness with zip ties along the gantry's included holes. The install is now complete. Or so I thought. The next morning I got up and saw that the double-sided sticky tape did not continue to hold, making them useless. I ordered the drag chain and the air hose off of Amazon and the pieces to connect them to the X tool from Etsy. However, since the attachment pieces failed to do their job, I looked around and found a much better option, which will be included in next week's video. Thanks for joining us today. I've included links in the description for items used in today's video. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button so we can get more content out to you. If you didn't like what you saw, smash that thumbs down button twice to really let us have it. Until next time, this is John for That's How We Do It, brought to you by Rustic American Woodwork.